Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. Assalamu alaikum, my dear respected viewers. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you. Welcome to the 15th episode of the Treaties of Rights series. Today we will discuss the right of the child. Regarding this, Imam Sajjad Zain al-Abdeen, peace be upon him, has said, and the right of your child is that you should know that he is from you and he will be ascribed to you in this world due to both his good deeds and his evil deeds. And you are responsible for what has been entrusted to you in teaching him good conduct and guiding him towards his Lord and helping him to obey him on your behalf and for himself. Then you will be rewarded for doing so and you will be punished. Then regarding his affairs, act like one who will be proud of bringing him up in this world and one who is excused by his Lord for what is between you and him for taking good care of him and the good results you achieved. And there is no power but in God. If one was to closely analyze the Imam's sayings regarding the rights of a child, they would surely notice that the Imam, peace and blessings be upon him, is emphasizing that a father should not forget that the child is his and that the child's good or bad deeds will be ascribed to him and that he is responsible for guiding the child to obey God and to teach and educate him. Also, the father should not be indifferent to the results of the deeds of his child. There will be rewards for the child's good deeds and punishment for the child's bad deeds for the father too. Lastly, a father should do his best to raise the child so that this excuse is acceptable both to his child and God. In order for a child to fully develop in a normal and stable manner, the parents must encourage good and positive behavior and discourage and work on eliminating the child's wrong or harmful inclinations. Mam Sadiq, Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said, Three rights for the child are incumbent upon his father. Selecting a good wife for him, giving him a good name, and exerting the utmost effort in raising him well. Thus, Mam Sadiq has considered that parents must exert all efforts to raise their children. Regarding this topic, Mam Sajjad Zain al-Abideen, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Oh God, please help me in raising and educating my children and making them good people. Thus, we realize that raising children is a hard task and everyone should seek God's help in this important affair. Raising a child or a number of children is by no means an easy task. When raising children, parents must consider many important and essential factors, one of which is the children's rights. Children have certain rights over their parents from the time that they are born. The first right relates to naming them. This right has been mentioned in many traditions. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, his pure progeny said, among the rights of the child over the father are that he chooses a good name for him and raises him well. The Prophet said, give your children the names of the prophets. The best names are Abdullah and Abdul Rahman. He, peace and blessings be upon him, has also said, children have three rights over their father, that he gives them a good name, teaches them how to read and write, and marry them off when they mature. Regarding this, Imam Ali, the commander of the faithful, Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, has said, the right of a child incumbent upon his father is that the father should choose a good name for him and teach him good etiquette and the Holy Quran. In order for a child to fully develop, they need both physical nurturing as well as mental and spiritual nurturing. The food for their spirit consists of the training and care they receive from their parents. Children need both food and love. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Love your children and be kind and merciful to them. Fulfill your promises made to them since children consider their father to be one who provides for their sustenance. Loving the children and fulfilling promises made to them are stressed here so that they do not learn to break their promises. There are many ways to express your love. One way is to kiss and hug them when they are small. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, kiss your children. There is an elevation in your rank in paradise as a reward for each kiss. Each raise in rank is as much as 500 years. Regarding this, Imam Ali, peace be upon him, said, Kissing the child is mercy, kissing the woman is desire, kissing parents is worship, and kissing one's believing brethren is religion. Time for a quick short break. Stay tuned.
Welcome back. Nurturing a child early in life may help him or her develop a larger hippocampus, the brain region important for learning, memory, and stress responses, a new study shows. Previous animal research showed that early maternal support has a positive effect on a young rat's hippocampal growth, production of brain cells, and ability to deal with stress. Studies in human children, on the other hand, found a connection between early social experiences and the volume of the amygdala which helps regulate the processing of and memory of emotional reactions. Numerous studies have also found out that children raising in a nurturing environment typically do better in school and are more emotionally developed than their non-nurtured peers. Brain image have now revealed that a mother's love physically affect the volume of her child's hippocampus. In the study, children of nurturing mothers had hippocampal volumes 10% larger than children whose mothers were not as nurturing. Research has also suggested a link between a larger hippocampus and better memory. This clearly shows that the words of our beloved Imam is backed up by scientific evidence. The Imam, peace be upon him, did not talk out of thin air. Although Islam advises us to love our children, it admonishes us against excessive love and its possible side effects. Imam al-Baqir, peace and blessings be upon him, said, The worst of fathers is one whose kindness to his children drives him to excess. The worst children is one whose negligence leads him to undutifulness towards parents. Excessive love for the children might spoil them and make them haughty and selfish. Imam Ali, the commander of the faithful, peace be upon him, said, The worst of affairs is to be pleased with oneself. Another right of a child is to respect their gender. Many people around the world look down upon a man who has several daughters. This is the specific ideology the Prophet, peace be upon him, was sent to fight. Parents should thank God for the children that God grants them with. They should realize that children are God's trust in them. They should realize that their heavy responsibility and exert all efforts to educate and raise them. The Immaculate Imams, peace be upon them, expressed that girls should be treated more kindly than boys are. This is really stressed in the sayings of the Prophet and the Immaculate Imams, peace be upon them all. Consider the following tradition in this regard. Hazia Yamani quoted on the authority of God's Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, your children are your best children. Regarding this, Imam Sadiq, peace be upon him, has said, daughters are good deeds and sons are blessings. God's deeds will be rewarded and blessings will be questioned about. The Prophet was given the glad tidings that God has granted him a daughter. His companions were so upset about the news that one could notice it from their faces. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Why are you so upset? A daughter is like a flower that I will smell. God will give her daily bread, Ibn Abbas quoted on the authority of God's Prophet. One who goes to the bazaar to buy a present for his family is like one who has given some charity to needy people. One must put a higher priority on giving gifts to his daughters over his sons, since making one's daughter happy is like freeing a slave from the children of Ishmael. Mam Sajjad asked us to attend one of his children's affairs in such a way as to cause their social growth and increased honor. We should raise them in such a way that they can live with honor and be a source of honor for us. It was mentioned that excessive love for the child might spoil him and make him selfish. He will also be raised in such a way that he cannot rely on himself and become independent. Fathers should foster a sense of self-confidence in their children from their early childhood so that they can be strong in the face of hardships. Imam Sadiq, peace be upon him, said, Look, Nuqman said, Oh my son, you can benefit from politeness later if you learn to be polite when you are young. One who wants to learn to be polite makes an effort to learn. He will make all efforts to acquire educational sciences. Once he learns it, he can benefit from it. Oh my son, always oblige yourself to perform your personal duties and force yourself to withstand the hardships imposed on you by others. Do not be greedy with others if you hope to attain nobility in this world. Do not place any hopes in other people. The prophets and the saints have all been able to attain their higher ranks by cutting hopes off. The we see that Luqman advises his son not to place any hopes in what others have. Thus, he helps him to develop to become independent. Parents should use these recommendations in raising their children. With this, we conclude this episode. Stay tuned for another episode on the Treaties of Rights. Thank you all for watching, and may Allah hasten the reappearance of our beloved Imam Mahdi. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.